swatches, 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 swatches. If you follow me on Twitter, I'm sure you've seen a quick video of me doing this to my brand new swatch folder. And this is basically 654 swatches of 654 different colors of watercolor that I very crazily, insanely decided to do in one shot. So I thought today we could have a nice flip through of each of the pages, uh, talk you through what brands I have in here, what I created this file for, and little tricks you can use to make making something like this as cheap as possible. The brands I have in here are entire sets of Holbein, Daniel Smith, Sennelier, Schmincke, and then some extra few brands. And I do not have a tube for every single one of them. A lot of them are just dot cards that I painted onto this. The only ones I painted from full tubes are the Holbeins, because I have all of them. And I have all of them because I can pick them up cheaply in Japan. If you want a set of Holbein for yourself that's the full range, you can actually do that. Holbein does do a five millimeter tube set of 108 colors that you can pick up. And in Japan, it's about 17,000 yen, which is about 70, 80 pounds, I wanna say off the top of my head, which is about 90, $100. However, that's in Japan. If you look on Amazon, which you can, but it's ridiculously expensive over there. It's, you're looking at 220 pounds, $220 mark. So I don't recommend buying it from Amazon UK or Amazon Japan. It's only, the paint is only worth picking it up at the Japanese price because they're not, they're not like Daniel Smith quality. I base my collection on Holbein because I can get them cheaper when I go to Japan to visit my family and then add like the fancy colors, the wild colors from like other brands on top. And I think that's really good way to grow your collection because no matter what country you're from, you will have a decent quality watercolor brand that is more affordable to you than any other brand. And you know, you can build up your foundation with that by buying, you know, most of the colors and then add the fancy colors on top and I think Holbein are horrendously expensive outside of Japan I would never recommend it at that price but if you are going to Japan then definitely definitely recommend picking up a few tube if not the set we have Holbein here and at the moment this is my favorite red I only discovered it last week and I think it's beautifully transparent and deep and stuff so I'm really happy about that and the blues and the purples, greens, and then with the Daniel Smith swatch cards, the cheapest way you can do is to buy their 240 color dot cards. I was really surprised because I didn't realize when I was doing this that it's not every color in their range. I don't understand why would you go to 240 colors and miss out a few, just, just add a, you know, do the whole set. So I do have a few blank ones like this and this, but it's a really cheap way to be able to look at the whole range. And I'm so grateful that Daniel Smith do this because there's no way I could afford to buy even the small tube in every color. And I also wouldn't want to. And it was a really good experience to do the swatching because before I did the swatching, I was like really fascinated by like the duochromes and the iridescence and, and the pearlescence. And now that I've swatched them, I'm not that impressed. And I'm like, oh, okay, I, they're fine. And um, so that's gonna save me a whole lot of money because that means that's a whole range I don't have to buy. But I also discovered a lot of really interesting colors that I wouldn't have bothered to buy before. So like things like shadow violet and all the lunar ones, I'm like, 
hmm, maybe I should get those. As far as dot cards are concerned, I think I've used the Daniel Smith one and the Schmincke one and the Daniel Smith one is so much better. The dots are bigger, the paint's re wet so much better. In my ranking of all the brands I swatched in this folder, I think Daniel Smith wins out because they, their paint re wet really well and their colours are absolutely stunning. In terms of tips on doing something like this for yourself, first tip is to not wait till you have 654 colours before you start swatching. Do start swatching as soon as you get your first set because I did this in one go and it took about two weeks of solid work and uh, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Second thing is if you have the option to have your swatch card printed, either at home or by a printer, do that because I hand made these with the Sharpie marks done myself and trimmed it, everything myself and that took the bulk of the time. It actually takes longer to make these cards than to swatch these paints. So I would definitely get it printed if you have that option. And the third tip is to don't get fancy with your cards. So at the beginning I decided, oh, it'd be really nice if I round off all the corners on these cards because I quite like them and they're quite fancy. Um, don't, because that's a lot of corners you're gonna have to cut out. Because I started off with the cards with the corners off, I had to carry on. And to be fair, when I started cutting the corners off with a punch, with a hand punch, no less, I didn't plan to do a swatch of 654. It just kind of ballooned as it went on. So keep things simple. For myself, I wanted the big wider band of the black line because I'm really, really interested in how transparent or opaque something is, a lot more than any other property in some ways. So that was really important. So I made the band a lot bigger than say, um, Denise from In Liquid Color or Eve Bolt does. However, I have borrowed a lot of the other conventions like using squares for when it's a genuine pigment, which means that you don't have a pigment code, which is from Denise. And then also writing the pigment codes, which will please them too, because I have been so blasé about pigment codes up until now. Cascade Green from Daniel Smith is a wonderful color that I would have never picked up, but I think I'm gonna have to buy a tube now because it does this really weird splitty color thing that is absolutely beautiful. Basically, my tip is to keep things simple, start small, don't leave it till the last end and don't let your project balloon at the end. I have to say, I really appreciate how beautiful Daniel Smith's colors are now that I have done this swatch folder. They just, their colors shine through in a way that you can't really put words to, but you know it's there, they are prettier than other brands. Now we come to the dual chromes and the, the interference and iridescence, and as you can see, it's not, it's fine, but uh, I thought they were gonna have more pizzazz than that but it was good to swatch so that it would save me a lot of money to not buy them. On to the Sennelier's. Sennelier's do do, like the Holbein's, a full range set of, I think, 98 colors, and there's a 10 milliliter tubes, and they are quite expensive, but Jackson's do them the most affordable price, and when they have the 10% off watercolor sales, that set also gets a 10%, so I recommend doing it then. I'll leave a link to that set down below, but as I said, it is quite expensive. And the Sennelier's, can I just say, they'd we wet beautifully. I had so much joy painting these. I did these straight after I did the Schmincke's. Now, the Schmincke's were a headache because they were a nightmare to rewet even with pre-wetting. And then I did the Sennelier's and it went so fast, so smooth. They re-wet beautifully. It was a joy to swatch them. 
To be fair, the Holbeins, the Daniel Smiths and the Sennelliers were a joy to swatch. On to the Shimmer Gay, I would say in terms of doing the swatching, this was the biggest problem child for me amongst all the brands. They do do 140 dot card, but the paints themselves are so much smaller than say like Daniel Smith's one and even after dropping water on them, you know, ahead of me doing the swatches, it was still a pain to try to get the paint any kind of color onto my brush so you can see that it's they're quite pale and I don't know if it's just because I couldn't get the paint onto the brush or not but I just feel meh about all these colors and I don't know it just it's, it's not doing it for me I'm afraid so, which was good to do because I've heard a lot of good things about Shiminke and I'm sure they are good paints. However, if you are sending a dot card, which is basically an advertisement for your paints, which is gonna make or break whether somebody's gonna buy your colors, then I would be a bit more generous with the amount of paint they put on so that the customer can have a better experience because from this dot card, I'm like, I don't know there's like two colors I'm quite interested in the paint gray bluish and, and the pearl and green are beautiful however the rest of the colors from the dot card I've been put off by them so that's a shame for them now on to the other colors I have some swatch cards from Eve from Eve Bolt she makes beautiful handmade paints these are just so beautiful and i will leave a link to her etsy store in the description below she sent me these really generous dot cards and uh, i swatched them and they are so beautiful rewets beautifully really easily rewets actually it's the best rewet of any brand that i've tried next up is another set of handmade paints this time it's from Dan from Penholder Art UK and he sent me wonderful, wonderful, beautiful paints as well. If you have ever been disappointed by ultramarine blue as I have, I, it's not my favorite color in the world. I have it out of necessity. I don't like most of the ultramarine blues because they are so pale and they're really hard work to re-wet. And I was rapidly falling out of love with ultramarine blue until I received Dan's ultramarine blue. And oh my goodness, it's beautiful. It's exactly what I wanted in a ultramarine blue it re-wet magnificently and look, just look at the intensity on that, you know? It's certainly what I imagined ultramarine blue should look like. If you want a more intense experience with an ultramarine blue, I will leave a link down below to his Etsy store. And the manganese blue, I think, is the most granulating manganese blue I've ever seen and it's beautiful. His cobalt turquoise color is beautiful and his quint for gold is beautiful as well. Then I have some M. Graham paints. They're fine. They are just missing that like one corner of the greatness of Daniel Smith's colors. However, for the purpose I bought these for, they are perfect. What I wanted these for was to replace Winsor Newton paints because I don't like Winsor Newton paints. I think they are quite boring. It's very bland, you know, and these are about the same price in the UK as a Winsor Newton. So for basic colors, instead of Winsor Newton, I'm gonna start buying M. Graham's instead if I need to. Talking of Winsor Newton is the paints I have had. And yeah, that's, that's, that's my, <sighs> reaction to Winsor Newton colors. It's it's fine, it's reliable, It but just ridiculously expensive for what they are. Um, 
you know, in America, Daniel Smith, M. Grahams are really affordable over there. That makes sense because they're made over there. Windsor & Newton is our brand, it's a British brand, it's what we all get encouraged to start off from because it's a British brand even though it's not made in Britain anymore and yet it's quite expensive because these two are the same price and look at this colour, look at this colour, look at this colour, look at this colour you'd go for that right? well I would because I'm a bright intense colour monster so I can see how if you're into landscapes and things brilliant go for Winsor & Newton but if you want bright intense colours go for M. Graham then I have some samples of Rembrandt and Old Holland and some Lucas and Dela Rowney that I did a swap with Dan from Penholder UK Art for. By the way, is it me or do Old Holland paints smell like smoked? Because I have received dot cars from two different people from two different countries and they both smell like not cigarette smoke but like a wood fire smoke and it's really strange to me <laughs> um but yeah so i have i have all the other brands that i only have a few of right at the back now in terms of new colors that i've discovered through the swatching that i'm really interested in uh, as i said the pyro rubin from holbein is beautiful that i didn't know before um, I'm quite familiar with the Holbein range, so there wasn't like a major amount of discovery. And then Daniel Smith is... See, I'm not a big fan of oranges and reds. I just kind of have them in my palette because you kind of need them. However, the Bordeaux, the Bordeaux is beautiful and I am seriously considering replacing my Queen Violet with the Bordeaux just because I just find that colour so much more attractive. I'm going to do some mixing tests to, to see if they would work as a replacement for Queen Violet. If not, I'm going to find room for this anyway. Perylene Violet is also beautiful that I wouldn't have considered before I was really excited to try Potter's Pink because I've heard a lot of good things about them and it was like nah it's okay I can't see it in my palette I can see it in in palettes of people who have very subtle palettes but not in mine now shadow violet doesn't look like much here but in here I can see like this like navy greeny inky color in with the dark purple and um, which is why I have kept the dot cards and the swatch cards in the same place because there are some effects you can see on the dot cards that you can't see on the swatches and vice versa I am definitely gonna try the shadow violet soon and then The Luna Blue is beautiful, Cascade Green is really beautiful. I I feel like with my collection I've now got the basics sorted and now I'm focusing more on paints that do really weird unpredictable things because I like that in my art. So I will probably be giving Luna Blue and Cascade Green an investigation. Naphthamide Maroon is another colour that I am interested in. You know in my previous video when I was going through the sketchbooks and I said oh you know I'm getting really pulled into the really subtle dark colours that I mixed up for a course and so maybe I should lessen to that. I'm trying to do that more so I am getting more attracted to the really dark inky colours like the Napsamide Maroon and the Perylenes, um, probably try the Perylene Green as well. So we will see how that will come into my art. Those are the colours that, that I'm thinking of trying next through having experienced this swatching marathon, bonanza, uh, craziness. <laughs> but I am so glad I did do the swatching because 
it has really opened up my eyes to new colors it's also going to save me a whole lot of money by like me not buying the colors i think i like that is like meh and also in terms of being able to buy the correct color that i'm thinking of in my head because we all know that the printed swatches are never the right colors i hope this was fun for you to flip through the swatch folder if you have any questions about anything i covered in this video please ask away in the comments below thank you so much for watching this video please like share and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and uh, i will see you in the next video